You have to see what's happening in the Bitcoin price this Sunday as our monthly candle is set to close in less than 48 hours, our weekly candle to close in less than eight hours. I wanted to talk about this emergency update about the dollar value right now approaching a major resistance level on a macro basis. This is probably the most important update you can watch on the Bitcoin price to end February. I'm taking a little bit of a different approach, snipers, so smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you like this type of macro analysis. But we have the best four dimensional channel covering cryptocurrency markets on the internet. And one thing we always monitor is the strength of the US dollar. Notice how right now we are approaching an extremely important resistance level. And this is a macro puzzle piece that if the DXY breaks through this resistance level, that wouldn't be the best sign for Bitcoin. But in the past 2017 2020, when we've come to this resistance for the dollar value, the dollar has started to slowly slow down and weaken allowing the cryptocurrency market to see further price discovery, more institutional capital flowing into risk on assets when this dollar value reaches this resistance level. So right now, right off the bat, the DXY is going to be extremely important guys to monitor here as we head into March. And so to start our macro analysis off, what I want to talk about is the monthly candle right now that's about to close in less than two days currently just staying within the price range of January's monthly candle. So that tells me that so far we've seen a lot of indecision this month. We've certainly seen some institutional accumulation. Notice how right now what we're viewing on the chart is Bitcoin's monthly candles after it broke its 2017 all time high. And the VPVR shows us clearly that institutions have accumulated and the most amount of volume has come in around this $34,000 level. Not a surprise for those that have been tuned into Sniper's channel. We've been very adamant about the $34,788 support level. And then interestingly enough, when we just remove the two monthly candles after Bitcoin broke its all time high, now we see most of the volume around 48,000, which means that the volume of possibly retail is currently in a loss while institutions are keeping this floor for Bitcoin around 34,000 US dollars, not allowing it to come down. And that was very clear this month because here's something I believe is extremely positive for the Bitcoin price and for this monthly candle close. And it's the fact that because we stayed within January's monthly candle range, if we look at what happened to traditional markets like the S&P 500, it didn't actually do that. A lot of people say that the S&P 500 is correlated to Bitcoin, but the S&P 500 actually broke its January monthly candle lows this month. So it showed more weakness against Bitcoin, strengthening the thesis that let's say this DXY does end up topping out at this resistance level for the immediate short to medium term. The cryptocurrency market is possibly poised to see more strength come into it than what we'll see with traditional markets. And so that was a very positive sign. It wasn't just the S&P 500, even Japan's traditional markets, the largest international market broke its January monthly candle lows with this new candle. But once again, Bitcoin didn't do that. Ethereum to the US dollar pairing also didn't break its January monthly candle lows. It stayed within this range. So this was clearly so far, unless something crazy happens in the next 48 hours, a very indecided or undecided month for Bitcoin. And the total market cap, same deal, did not breach its January candle lows. Now, one thing I do want to note about the total market cap monthly candle close right now, it potentially is about to close below a major resistance of 1.78 trillion with the body below this level. We want to potentially see this get above 1.78 trillion by this candle close. But right now, this to me, and you can see it's also if we were to pull up the daily chart breaching this macro structural support level that Bitcoin didn't yet breach. You can see we wicked inside of it, and that could be because we saw a little bit of fear coming into markets, especially with the Ukraine and Russia news. We see what's happening with inflation. We saw a lot of cryptocurrencies like altcoins move into Bitcoin as a hedge, and that was clearly shown by this chart that factors in all the altcoins outside of Ethereum this month, breaking this extremely important structural support. And so even though fear is coming into the market, we're still seeing strength with Bitcoin and it's coming in two different ways. All coins are moving into Bitcoin as a hedge, but we're also seeing the Bitcoin to US dollar spot pairing showing strength against the S&P 500, not wanting to breach its January lows, despite the S&P 500 breaching its January lows. So there's clear strength with Bitcoin right now. And I think that this is extremely important heading into March because 
a lot of people have been undecided about what's been going on with Bitcoin dominance as it didn't really follow the DXY like it did in 2017 straight back to the upside. And so there was certainly something a little bit different about this bull market than what happened in 2018, where we immediately saw Bitcoin dominance come up with the DXY. This time around, Bitcoin dominance stayed low and we saw altcoins like Ethereum maintain strength for the most part. Of course, in the macro forward looking opinion, we don't necessarily have as much strength to the Ethereum Bitcoin chart as we were seeing from the start of this bull rally. And that has to do with a lot of the fear. We broke back down into the symmetrical triangle, but you can see even with this monthly candle, it stayed within January's range. So it's very clear to us that the cryptocurrency market is still a very strong player right now. And what's also interesting to me is if we move into this weekly chart, and you can also see it in the monthly, but you can see it better on the weekly chart is when we look at this VPVR on the right hand side, there's actually very little volume between 40,000 and $45,000 area. I mean, 48,000 is really where most of the volume comes in when it comes to that retail side. Uh, but for the most part, inside of this range here, there's very little volume. And I think this would be a very good time to talk about what to expect for Bitcoin based on the micro timeframes. But before we get there, and what I mean by that is how do we want the micro timeframes to play out over the next few days into the next few weeks heading into March to assume that we're going to be seeing either continued upside or a breach of this major structural support to see downside. So we'll talk about what we're looking for in those micro timeframes. But what I do want to talk about right now is this weekly candle close. You can see what is very important right now is that we're staying above 38,000 US dollars. And what we also know is volume has finally been coming in. It hasn't been as much volume as we saw in early 2021. But if we go into the institutional six hour time frame, we're certainly seeing institutions accumulate below the $38,000 level. And I think that that was very clear with the recent dip that we saw where we came down, we saw one spur of institutional sell pressure, a pretty large amount of institutional sell pressure, where it was immediately bought back up by institutional and retail volume. And that was when Bitcoin came to test 34,788. Once again, we predict this exactly on the dot here on the Snipers channel, youtube.com forward slash snipers, the best cryptocurrency technical analysis on the internet. Subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so, so we can hit 100,000 snipers. So institutional volume we know comes in all the time at this point below 38,000 US dollars. So it's not a surprise that Bitcoin is maintaining 38,000 US dollars. Like I showed you guys on that monthly chart, institutions have sort of set the floor at this $34,000 level, not allowing Bitcoin to come down below it and purchasing Bitcoin, despite the S&P 500 showing weakness this month, not allowing Bitcoin to see weakness below this level. So that to me says that Bitcoin is still the very bullish asset when it comes to the basket of potential assets you could be invested in, like the traditional markets, commodities, and then we have the cryptocurrency market. So with this weekly candle, we are say, uh, staying above 38,000 US dollars. So that's a very positive sign. And so when it comes to the more micro time frames, what we want to see, if we want to assume further upside for Bitcoin, we can sit here and talk about this daily volume that came in that was extremely nice. Um, it was institutional volume for sure. Uh, and it came in below 38,000. So here's what I would say coming into the next 48 hours, into the next week, into March, is that preferably if we want to assume Bitcoin is ready to see further upside to break this monthly candle range that it's pretty much stuck in over the last two months, which we can just look at January's candle and say that the high of 47,900, so 48,000 to the low of 32,900, so 33,000, so 48,000 to 33,000, this range. When are we gonna break this range? The early signs of that in the micro timeframes will be if we're gonna break the $48,000 level, we wanna see Bitcoin stay above 38,000. I talked about this in our two minute update that I had in Amsterdam yesterday at the airport. And that was the fact that as a Bitcoin bull, all I'm asking for this weekend is to stay above 38,000. So if we stay above 38,000, now if we get above 41,950, or even if we stay around 41,950 to 44,800, really, if we can just stay between 41,950 and 38,000, 
and move sideways, I think that would be very positive for Bitcoin in the long term because guess what? Remember, there's not much volume around this range. So we want to build up volume and accumulation inside of this range. So it wouldn't be a bad thing to be, for Bitcoin to stay above 38,000, even stay below 44,800 and build up some volume here so we can get the floor even higher, not just for institutions, but for retail to then see very strong momentum to the upside. And a big puzzle piece that will confirm this is how the DXY is reacting to this major resistance level. So not only are we testing this resistance level that was a previous support level once, twice, a third time, we broke it coming into 2020 and 2021, and now we're testing as a resistance. But if we were to just look at the garden variety resistance, you can see there's also this ceiling that we're facing. So because, uh, the DXY is certainly facing a very important resistance level, a very important ceiling where once again in 2017, it started a bull rally in 2020, it started a bull rally. Would this be the next bull rally for Bitcoin to break 69,000 US dollars if the DXY rejects this area? That's something we really want to monitor because the DXY is testing it right now as we speak. So that's something we can monitor on a day-to-day -day basis like a weatherman. And if we break above this, it wouldn't be good for the prospects of the cryptocurrency market. But if we break below it and we see weakness here, that could be extremely positive and indicative of the thesis that Bitcoin will stay above 38,000, continue further up and finally break this range, get back above 48,000. So very interesting to see this. And then on the other side of the equation, we always address the bulls and the bears on the Sniper's channel. If we start to see any price action below 38,000, that could be the hint that maybe we need to test lower levels. And if that's the case, number one, the Bitcoin asset as, you know, the, the basket of assets that institutions and retail accumulate when it comes to commodities and the traditional markets, Bitcoin is probably going to be more bullish if we see downside in traditional markets and commodities and even Bitcoin. And so the question is, where would we start to dip down to? Well, if we start to cross back below 38,000, we have to assume that maybe at this point, 34,000 needs to get tested again and possibly even below that area. So where would we look for in terms of potential price targets when if we break 34,708, the next major level where there's volume is 25,880. Well, inside of this range would be the potential area that Bitcoin could actually bottom out at. And so that could also be something for us to monitor if we see weakness below 38,000. So the longer we stay above 38,000, the more the bullish thesis is strengthened. Right now, the range that we're playing in snipers has a support of 38,000 and a resistance of 42,000, let's say, but really it's 41,950 because here on the Sniper channel, we always give you guys the exact price levels because it does matter. And that was clearly shown recently with the S&P 500. I don't mean to bang this tree again, but do you guys remember when we saw this relief rally for the S&P 500 and we talked about this candle high at 45.85, just a dollar shy of the 45.86 candle high. And I said that was a sign of weakness. And guess what ended up happening? We broke down even lower. So even to the dollar, the price levels matter. So when analysts give you these extremely large boxes and say that's what you know Bitcoin needs to break through, I think that that's a little bit of a weak thesis when you can just look at the exact candle highs, the candle lows, when it comes to market structure, overall trend, and price action and those exact price levels are always going to be extremely important. So I think that so far right now, we're seeing the best case for Bitcoin. We're seeing strength against traditional markets. We're seeing the DXY strengthen. And here's something that's even more interesting. The DXY broke its January candle highs on the monthly right now for this monthly candle, but it didn't cause Bitcoin to break down you know, below the January candle low. So that, that's showing us the dollar is strengthening. But Bitcoin is not necessarily reacting to it. It's saying that we don't care. I don't care. I, I am still a strong asset at this price. Um, and so that's very interesting to note there. And with that being said, we can even look at some of these stocks, right? Like Coinbase, the more, more crypto centric stock, 
actually breaking its January lows, but Bitcoin not doing that, right? So even ARK Innovation ETF breaking its January lows on this monthly candle, Bitcoin not doing that. So that's very positive. I mean, as long as Bitcoin doesn't see a 20% drop in the next 48 hours, then what we're saying right now is extremely important. So the other important thing to realize is on the daily, we have increasing buy volume and we have this higher low that formed from the initial test of 34,788. That's a very bullish and positive sign there. If we were to actually even just look at some indicators, we can pull up the RSI and the MACD and see if there are any divergences that are important to mention here. With this weekly chart, notice here how so far, if we were to look at divergences, let's see what we've got. Not much divergences. I would rather not see too many divergences just because the divergences could really play with our mind. Uh, but you can see here, we're, we're, we're following the RSI uh, quite strong here. We're not seeing much of a deviation there. Um, so I think that's a very, very positive sign there. Um, and then if we were to pull up the moving average convergence divergence, uh, the MACD on the monthly chart, one thing that we have to realize is we did see a MACD bearish crossover uh, with this December to January price action. And in the past, what's happened to Bitcoin, if we looked at what happened in 2017, when we saw this bearish crossover, Bitcoin just moved to the side. It didn't see too much more price action to the downside for about five months before it saw a final capitulation move to then move back into new all time highs. And so once again, would it be a bad thing for Bitcoin to move sideways? Not necessarily if we're above 38,000 and below 44,800, because that allows more volume to come in and to strengthen Bitcoin's price at these prices. And so with that being said, there's not much to talk about with on-chain metrics. Uh, what I will say is we do have some Bitcoin coming onto exchanges. We have Ethereum and USDT leaving exchanges for the day. And so not much uh, to talk about there. The numbers are quite low, all under 100 million right now. And so we'll continue to monitor the on-chain metrics here on the Sniper's channel. And I believe that is all we need to cover today. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you support this content, it was a little bit of a different approach. And the last thing I will say is, I know that a lot of people have talked about the Ukraine and Russian invasion. Uh, this was an interesting chart that I saw of past invasions um, in the Iraq war, the Crimean crisis, the Gulf War, the Vietnam War. Uh, so I just wanted to just kind of throw this out there that you know, I don't know if war uh, right now, uh, especially in the Russia and Ukraine, could be the strongest narrative for price action to the downside. Of course, it's affecting Russia, and my heart goes out to everyone in Europe. I just actually came back from Europe today, and so anybody being affected by what's happening in the Ukraine, my heart goes out to you. And with that, thank you all, snipers, for tuning into the Snipers channel this Sunday. Have an amazing Sunday and a blessed one, and I'll see you guys next week. Snipers.